So what do managers do? What important functions do managers contribute to an organization? How do you make organizations secede? Well, up until the 1900s, actually most people didn't think of management as a separate vocation. But in the early part of that century, a French executive named Henry Fayoul started examining the work of his managers and his employees. What he discovered was that there were certain things that managers did that made them better managers. He looked at these as the basic functions of management that we use to this day. So what are these functions of management? There's basically four. Number one is planning. Number two is organizing. Number three is leading. And number four is controlling. Man the bridge, dive, dive! Planning is future-oriented, and it basically determines what direction the organization will be going to. It's a rational and a very systematic way of decision-making that will affect the future of the company for many years to come. It is a kind of uh, organized uh, foresight as well as corrective hindsight. It may involve predicting the future as well as attempting to control events. Peter Drucker defined planning as follows. Planning is the continuous process of making present entrepreneurial decisions systematically and with best possible knowledge of their future, organizing systematically the efforts needed to carry out these decisions and measuring the results of these decisions against the expectations through organized and systematic feedback. So it's really the concept of a loop. Planning starts with what you'd like to do in the future and then measuring against what you achieve. An effective planning program incorporates the effect of both external as well as internal factors. Things such as external environment, the industry, internal resources, all these different things go into the planning process. With organizing, we're looking at the formal structure of authority of the organization and looking at the direction and the flow of such authority through which work subdivisions are formed and defined so that each part relates to the other part and they can do more together. The functions of organizing basically is broken down into five separate components. Number one, identify the tasks that must be performed and group them when necessary. Number two, assign these tasks to the personnel while defining their authority and responsibility. Three, delegating this authority to these employees. Four, establishing a relationship between authority and responsibility. And five, coordinating these activities. The leading function is concerned with leadership, communication, motivation, and supervision so that the employees that work with us can perform their activities efficiently while also being effective, i.e. meaning they achieve their desired goals. The leadership element involves issuing instructions and guiding subordinates. Communication must be open both ways so that feedback can be received and motivation is very important since highly motivated people are more likely to perform better than lowly motivated people and less direction is needed. With control, we have our feedback loop. These are the activities that are undertaken to ensure that events do not deviate from the standards we have set up re previously. These activities consist of actually establishing the standards, measuring performance, and comparing it to those set standards and taking corrective actions as needed to correct any deviations. Controlling is absolutely essential for a well-functioning organization. Without control, we don't know what works and what doesn't work. 